Next repair, this is an SY2 Yamaha synth. Great sounding thing, uh, has a really nice sounding filter. And interestingly for the time, aftertouch, which is actually not working on this synth. Everything else will be checked as well. Seems to be okay, but we'll check it all out, calibrate it, and we'll find out why the aftertouch isn't working because it's such a feature of this instrument. So the way this works is you take out two screws from underneath here, either side, and then the top flips up, which is a bit tricky with one hand. The top flips up like this. Very civilized. I wish more manufacturers would do that. That less less done. Um, it's not done so frequently these days, but it used to be quite a common thing. Even since like the Matrix Six uh, and Sonic EPS. Um, and lots of other keyboards. I think Jupiter 8 does this as well. Allows you to get access to the components. Good design. So let's jump in and have a look what's wrong with this thing. So inside the SY2, beautiful build quality. Everything is tied back beautifully. It's very neat and tidy. I mean, it's a completely hand assembled synth. Remember this way before computer aided design and manufacture, so this is all done by hand, which is um, pretty damn impressive. It would have been a very expensive synth at the time. And this is in beautiful condition. So I'll go through and check the capacitors, especially in the power supply, but I'm expecting these to be um, in really good shape. And unless I get lots of leakage in the capacitors when I check them, I won't touch them, especially if it's calibrating okay and sounding good. So next, got to find out why the aftertouch isn't working. It's a really clever design, this. It basically just has this bar. So the way the aftertouch works on this is that when you push down the key, when you go beyond that point, it moves this little bar, and the little bar moves in front, this little finger which moves in front of this light and on the other side here is a light dependent resistor and as the finger moves out of the way it allows more light to hit the light dependent resistor which then changes the resistance which affects the rest of the circuit. So when it's completely blacked off uh, there's um, no light getting to the resistor and as it opens up it actually starts changing its resistance. So this is how it was. You press down the key. No change at all to the circuit. So I suspected that the light dependent resistor is not working. So I've patched one in temporarily, um, an external one. So now I have our light dependent resistor here and I'm going to play some notes and cover this and see what happens. And I have my aftertouch set to wah and let's see what happens there. So that works by simply blocking this with my finger. It's modulating the signal. So that means the rest of the circuit's working fine. So it's just this light dependent resistor. This is the LDR out of the actual synth. That's what it looks like. It's actually inside a grommet. And this is the one that I'm going to replace it with. And this one, when I connected it up to check the resistance, it really only varies by about 200 ohms. Whereas this one goes from um, no resistance to maximum when I put my finger in front of it. So I think that would be more effective. I've got a smaller one too, which might fit better inside the grommet. So I'm going to find which one works. So here's the old Yamaha LTR taken out and my new one put inside. We're going to see how that works. So now with the new LDR in place, let's see what happens. So I push a key down. Beautiful. Here we go. So it was that.